So, I'm here to issue a challenge to A Voice for Reasonable People, the Edmonton Men's Circle, and Feminist Edmonton. Girl Writes What and I challenge you to formally debate the question, Is Feminism Hate? We will be arguing in the affirmative. The stipulations for this debate are as follows. 1. Each side will be represented by two people, a man and a woman. This will underscore that rather than a conflict between the genders, this is a disagreement between camps defined by their respective points of view. Number two, each side gets equal time to present their ideas without interruption from either the opposing side or the audience. Three, both sides will agree to employ language accessible to the general public and eschew, in general, academic or otherwise arcane terminology. And here's why. One characteristic of the emerging postmodern science is its stress on nonlinearity and discontinuity. This is evident, for example, in chaos theory and the theory of phase transitions, as well as in quantum gravity. At the same time, feminist thinkers have pointed out the need for an adequate analysis of fluidity, in particular, turbulent fluidity. These two themes are not as contradictory as it might at first appear. Turbulence connects with strong nonlinearity, and smoothness, fluidity, is sometimes associated with discontinuity. Examples in catastrophe theory. So, a synthesis is by no means out of the question. Secondly, the postmodern sciences deconstruct and transcend the Cartesian metaphysical distinctions between humankind and nature, observer and observed, subject and object. Already quantum mechanics earlier in the century shattered the ingenuous Newtonian faith in an objective, pre-linguistic world of material objects out there. No longer could we ask, as Heisenberg put it, whether particles exist in space and time objectively. But Heisenberg's formulation still presupposes the objective existence of space and time as the neutral, unproblematic arena in which quantized particle waves interact, albeit indeterministically. And it is precisely this would-be arena that quantum gravity problematizes. Just as quantum mechanics informs us that the position and momentum of a particle are brought into being only by the act of observation, so quantum gravity informs us that space and time themselves are contextual, their meaning defined only relative to the mode of observation. Thirdly, the postmodern sciences overthrow the static ontological categories and hierarchies characteristic of modernist science. In place of atomism and reductionism, the new sciences stress the dynamic web of relationships between the whole and the part. In place of fixed individual essences, example, Newtonian particles, they conceptualize interactions and flows, example, quantum fields. Intriguingly, these homologous features arise in numerous seemingly disparate areas of science, from quantum gravity to chaos theory to the biophysics of self-organizing systems. In this way, the postmodern sciences appear to be converging on a new epistemological paradigm, one that may be termed an ecological perspective, broadly understood as recognizing the fundamental inter interdependence of all phenomena and the embeddedness of individuals and societies in the cyclical patterns of nature. Oh, wow! You're really smart! Simply put, we don't have degrees in gender studies, and we lack the vernacular taught in those classes. So do most of the public. And jargon can easily conceal the fact that those speaking it don't understand what they're even saying. Speak to us as laypersons, and show everyone you know what you're talking about. Number four, all people present for the debate, debaters, moderator, audience, may be videotaped by anyone for the entirety of the debate. Five. The audience must be split into your supporters on one side and ours on the other, and can only be comprised of people personally invited by the people debating. Invite as many people as you want, as long as they only take up half the seats. No plus one invites either. Each person attending must be invited by someone debating and must sit in their respective section. Before the debate even begins, both sides must take responsibility for all the members of the audience sitting in their respective section. This rules out the possibility of either side infiltrating the other to disrupt things and make the other side look bad. A Voice for Reasonable People and the Edmonton Men's Circle have formed for the sole purpose of opposing my activism here in Edmonton. I know that because I've been to the Reasonable People's Facebook page and their website. Another Voice for Men not only states that they started a counter website of feminist literature and other helpful tools to help prevent the growth of MRAs here in the city, but that statement was filed under the heading, Tracking MRAs. These guys have obviously formed for no other reason than to oppose me. If that weren't the case, they would have more on their site than one article about violence and blueberry beer. But despite my challenge to repudiate anything on my website, not a single person has stepped up to the plate. If what we're saying is so obviously crazy and terrible, and feminism is so obviously a force of benevolence, our assertion that feminism is a hate movement should be a cinch to refute, shouldn't it? In, in Manufacturing Consent, Noam Chomsky, a Jewish person himself, recounts going to bat for a Holocaust denier's right to freedom of speech on this principle. Let them speak, and the world will see that they are from Mars. This is the same thing that people combating the Westboro Baptist Church have said. And what's more, that's our approach to you. A week after you put up posters, I put those posters on my YouTube channel. 
This challenge is going to be featured on Girl Writes What's channel. She has 17,000 subscribers. What were they saying at the G8? The whole world is watching. The whole world is watching. 